For the next 10 minutes, what I would like to do is give you a brief history of change. Change uh, that is pervasive around us. Starting from the change that we observe in the world today and then zooming in into our own association. At the geopolitical level today, we see a tremendous amount of unrest. Last week, I read this book by Giulio Tremonti, The Three Prophecies, former finance minister of Italy. And he wrote this book in a very provocative analysis of what happened in the era of globalization, which can be dated to the fall of the Berlin Wall. And in a very quiet, very nonviolent, almost without realizing, a world has been established, a world order has been established where finance deregulation and uh, uh, rules that have been governing the whole world and moving jobs around the globe has been happening almost without realizing it, that that was occurring and the deep transformation that that had on all of us. It's not the first time in history that there was a globalization. One happened before in the 1500 with the discovery of America and the New World. And at that time, it wasn't very peaceful. Actually, it was very violent. And there was spread of diseases and a very different contest to the point that William Shakespeare defined this time as the time is out of joint. So now today, this globalization is actually changing. And many people have, been realized, have realized that have been left out of this movement of this situation. And some talk about globalization. And these people, large swath of society, are actually very unhappy of what has happened. And I think that this is part of the root of what we are observing in uh, the nationalism that we see on the rise on so many areas, in so many areas of the country. And I use Brexit as an example, among many others. So in sum, what I see is that the, today, the time is, again, out of joint. I see that there is great unrest in the world and that there is a generalized lack of trust in the elite, whether they are perceived or whether they are real. And so you may be asking, why is he telling me this? And the reason why I'm telling you this is because us as scientists are part of society and we have a responsibility in all this. And perhaps the way that it crystallizes better in my mind, this global unrest that we live in, is the anti-vaxxers movement, for example, where the trust in established scholar, elite, evidence base no longer holds the day. The time is out of joint, I bet William Shakespeare would say today. On top of this geopolitical change revolution that we see, if that, as if this was not enough, I think we have another layer of revolution, which is the digital revolution that we are observing. Social media offered a fabulous democratization where everybody can, doesn't need to depend on somebody else to be able to communicate with the world, but can do it directly. But everybody is also considered an expert today. Everybody knows everything. And everybody can create their own little universe, you know, of the people who agree, who like each other, and the feeling that everybody thinks the same, that he's right. And so, again, why am I telling you this? Well, in a world where everybody can communicate, everybody can listen, why do we need a professional forum? I can be connected with all the people that I want to be connected. The third layer I want to mention of change is the fabulous change that is happening in, uh, in science, in the microbial sciences. I always try to understand what has caused a fabulous renaissance of the microbial sciences, and there are probably many determinants to that. But certainly, I would say that technology and metagenomics had, has opened tremendous opportunity for the field that allowed you to study microbes in a way that was absolutely impossible before. The diagnostic paradigm is completely transformed and 
offers opportunities that are just unthinkable. The CRISPR-Cas system, I mean, we're familiar with CRISPR-Cas9, CRISPR-Cas12-13 is offer, offering amazing potential for diagnostics. And this also poses very important educational uh, questions. In this article published in ASM educational journal, Jimby, it's very clearly highlighted the need of educating the new generation about all this transformative technology. And as it would mention, the menace of antimicrobial resistance is complicating all that I said up to this point at a global level at a science level, at a communication level. And this is something where we have very big responsibilities because there are situations where we open the medicine cabinet and it's empty. And that is something very scary. So the fourth layer is the effect that all this has on associations like ASM. We live in an era of turbulence. All this unrest, all these changes create a sense of change in the world of nonprofit and association that is unprecedented. And also the change is happening at a pace that is incredible, that sometimes doesn't even give you time to react to what is happening. And of course, we have to do all this and tackle of this issue with much tighter budgets than what we had in the past. And today, if you have read Bowling Alone by Robert Putnam, you got the message that today's culture, joining for the sake of belonging, is no longer the rule. When we were graduate students, when I was a graduate student, when many of you were graduate students, belonging to your society was the natural thing to do. Today, the iTunes generations buy a, a song, don't buy a record. So they have transactional relationship also with societies, which poses a challenge. And I would say that it's important for association and for scientific societies to think, how do we go back to that vision of association that is so beautifully expressed by Alexis de Tocqueville in Democracy in America, where he dedicates a whole chapter to the power of association in America, saying that when there is something innovative happening in America, it is because people get together and they promote innovation in their own field. That's our beacon. That's what we need to think. And I'm very proud to say that ASM saw this. In 2014 and 2015, the futures group that was assembled by ASM got together and really tried to envision what the future for ASM was at this time of great unrest and of great change. And we're trying to meet today's challenge. We've been working very hard on advocacy. And for example, by raising the caps and ensuring that the budgets for science could be increased. We have been hosting workshops, very uh, important workshops that have resulted in very concrete action. I'm proud to say that the support for the National Microbiome Data Collaborative by ASM has generated this year appropri the appropriation of $10 million to build a data infrastructure for microbiome data. And this has been a big success for ASM in promoting and advancing microbial sciences. As President Swanson mentioned, we have supported the uh, 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 Combating Sexual Harassment Act of 2009. And I would like to thank here Chairwoman Eddie Bernice Johnson, the Chairwoman of the Science Committee of the House, who specifically in her remarks at the hearing a couple of weeks ago, singled out ASM for its work and its contribution to the hearing and in uh, moving the field forward. We should be very proud. Let's give the Chairwoman a round of applause. She deserves it. Thank you. I also would like to tell how important is the work that ASM is doing in journals. We are a very important publisher of microbiology. We publish 17% of the world share of microbiology articles, and we receive 44% of the world citations in microbiology. And this is thanks to all your work and all your publishing in ASM journals, which the profit that comes for that goes in all those programs that President Swanson just mentioned. It is possible because of this. And also, we know that open access is a big change that is happening in our society 
in all society, including ours. And ASM is determined to embrace all the good that, that is coming from open access while we think how to develop a new business model that would allow to serve our members and to serve microbial sciences in the best possible way and in a sustainable way. Our meetings, I don't have to talk about it. I'm hearing fabulous things about this meeting. Thank you for being here. And also, thank you. You get it. You get it. All this change and all the work that's happening is really appreciated by our member. A very recent survey that just received, we haven't even circulated, says that 85% of ASM members, non-members, or people who interacted with us are satisfied with what ASM is doing. So from the bottom of the heart and on behalf of the whole board of directors, I would like to thank you for your support, for believing in ASM, and for continuing your engagement. Where do we go from here? Well, we heard that you want an ASM which is innovative, which is visionary, which is collaborative, which is transformative, which is cutting edge. This is exactly what we are committed to. We want to be what you asked us to be. And on this note, I think that all together as a society, as ASM, we have the awesome challenge of promoting and advancing microbial sciences also by galvanizing millions of people, millions of stakeholders around the globe on the power of microbes and the importance that this have on all our lives. And we're very committed to this and stay tuned on all this. How? Again, you heard this message, get involved. We need you. Without you, we won't be able to do it. So thank you and I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the meeting.